Okay, welcome to the Cube. We're live in San Francisco. Uh, this is the Cube at the GE Industrial Cloud event, uh, hashtag Industrial Cloud. Tweet us if you have any questions. I'm John Furrier. This is the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise, and I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante, wikibon.org. Paul Doherty is here. He's the CTO of Accenture. Paul, welcome to the Cube. Thank you. We think Glad Accenture. Yeah, th thanks for making some time. So we think Accenture. We think deep industry expertise. You know, deep knowledge, um, hands-on, like hard problems. So this is a big, chewy, deep expertise problem. Talk about uh, first of all what you do at Accenture, and then we'll get into the whole relationship with GE and the opportunity that you guys are going after. Yeah, sure. Yeah, good question. So I've got the uh, the role of Chief Technology Officer within Accenture. So what I'm responsible for is. Uh, is our technology labs looking ahead to the next generation of technology and how we uh, use our technology labs and our research and development to bring that back into our business. I'm also responsible for the emerging businesses that we start up in areas like cloud, like mobility, like big data, like social. So those areas report to me and uh, as we you know, look to integrate those into our core business. So are you kind of like a chef looking at the best ingredients <laughs> out there? You guys don't well, I guess you do make some technologies, but you're not a you know a software player. I mean, you write software, but but you know you're not competing with the IBMs and the HPs of the world. I mean, you do compete on the services side, but you're not tinkering and developing tech per se for mass distribution. So, are you more like a chef looking at the best technologies out there, or are you guys increasingly developing your own tech? It's a little bit of both. So we you know our position in the market is uh, would would characterize as independent with a point of view. So we we work with uh, the technologies that are mm. going to deliver the best value for our clients and that uh, that involves a you know, number of uh, number of vendors, number of tech companies. And it varies by industry, varies by company based on what they want to use. So we have to be ready to work with whatever technology is right for the, the company. But then within certain industries, within certain segments, within certain geographies, we can see the patterns and see what's going to add most value to the customer. So we'll have a point of view that if you're trying to solve this problem, then this kind of technology is going to help you do it most effectively. And we'll then invest in the architectures, accelerators, toolkits, training for our people, et cetera, to deliver more value to our clients around those particular technology so platforms. So CTO, you do a lot of strategy, you probably do a lot of due diligence, and yep. as you say, you put together those architectures so that you can actually develop solutions, because that's what your clients care right. about. So take us back to when you first started investigating this so-called industrial internet. What were some of the techs that you were looking at? What, 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 what's your vision, and then what's the platform that ultimately you guys are building out? Yeah, it's a good question. So what led us to, you know, to uh, GE and industrial internet and the discussions we're having was a broader phenomenon that we're seeing happen around digital business uh, that I talked a little bit about during during the session. Uh, and we are really seeing this, this big momentum shift toward digital business across industries. And it started in retail and industries that are more consumer oriented with companies shifting their, their model, they're shifting to digital marketing, digital commerce, et cetera. And that, but when you look at how to apply that, when our clients look at how to squeeze the digital value out of other parts of their business or capitalize on digital opportunities, they're impeded by the fact that the, you know, they're manufacturing the, the physical, you know, part of the business that they run is often outside, you know, outside the scope of their, their IT systems. It's not connected, it's not online, et cetera. So as you look at how to deliver value and how to achieve that digital vision for companies that operate, you know, physical types of industries or B2B types of industries, that led us to you know, this notion of uh, industrial technology and the convergence of industrial and operations technology with information technology. So it's IT plus OT coming together with, with information technology. So we've been looking at that for a while. Uh, we acquired a company a number of years ago that was in the industrial technology area uh, that was in uh, refinery uh, refinery automation and we uh, explored that and built some built a business around that we built a connected vehicle platform that we've used with a number of the automotive companies to help them build their connected car and uh, infotainment and uh, navigation services and those types of things in the car so we've got a number of a number of steps into the industrial world through those you know by working in some of those early adopting industries so the real-time nature of this opportunity is is somewhat unique I mean everybody's talking talks about real time and in, in the mainstream world but this has really got to be real time machines yeah. making decisions to figure out how machines should operate how uh, how hard you should push a turbine and how to optimize that over time so uh, but at the same time you've got all this historical data we heard about you know this sort of time yeah. machine that yeah. we yeah. Yeah. heard about today um, so how do you marry those two and what kind of requirements and unique requirements does that real time uh, uh, entity put on on architectures and and how you guys you know behave well, it's a it's a stretch, I think, for a lot of the for the certainly a stretch for the architectures that our clients operate today, which is why I think there's a big opportunity to look at how the industri industrial internet evolves and mm. what kinds of new technologies, new platforms, and approaches 
our clients will need. The reality is there's not one answer. There's not one data schema. There's not one data architecture that's going to solve medical equipment problems in, you know, in, uh, in the health industry and uh, refineries, uh, automation and drilling problems and transportation, et cetera. So the, the challenge will be about having a you know, flexible platform and understanding the uh, data historian types of technologies for time series data, uh, real time machine to machine communications for data, you know, smaller data that you need to get very quickly, and uh, Hadoop and you know, technologies like that uh, that can uh, process you know, massive amounts of data in memory technology, all the different tools that are available to assemble the right architecture in a given industry for a given company to solve the problem. So the, the, when we think about the platform and think about the industrial internet, it's about coming up with the right architectures and the smart engineering to solve specific problems for clients, and it needs to be you know, not a one size fits all platform, but a platform that allows the blending and engineering of different yeah. techniques. I mean, I mean, that's the challenge that we see too. Is I mean, it's 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 really a, um, it's a conflict. I mean, you have you want agile platform, right? But you also want the ability to vertically integrate and ha use those expertise in verticals. You know, in uh, you know telematics to aerospace to wherever. <laughs> you still got to have the tooling at the top of the stack or the vertical. So, how do you look at the developer environment? Because the developers are going to be building the apps, and obviously, Marissa's got an interest in there with Pivotal uh, and as well as EMC and VMware. Um, you got. AWS has been very successful with the developer community on the on the consumer side. So, how do you look at that app developer, the operations productivity or the industrial productivity, and then the infrastructure? Because you can flatten the infrastructure out and use virtualization. And then, you as you start moving up <laughs> into operations, how do you create that horizontal foundation technically? And what do the stacks look like? And this is what people, you know, the geeks want to know: is okay if I go vertically integrate. Am I going to be foreclosing an interoperable opportunity in another way with yeah. the data? So is that the data fabric that's open? So these are the kinds of things, I want to get your thoughts on that vision. I know it's not baked out yet in the industry, but how do you look at that challenge? Yeah, I think one of the, one of the things we share amongst the partners that were, were up on stage today, if you look across Accenture, uh, Pivotal, Amazon, GE, is a, is a view that of how the stack needs to work in this environment. So I think the stack question is a, is a very important one. So when you look at the stack at the at the cloud level, Amazon provides you know provides great ca capability, public cloud, everything that uh, the Werner uh, Werner Vogels talked about. Um, but clients are going to choose different solutions. Some of our clients will want hybrid clouds. Some will want private clouds. Uh, you know, other types of technology. So uh, there's a, a there's a cloud layer, but then there needs to be a layer above the cloud to say how do we move things across different platforms so I can do what makes sense in Amazon and Amazon, I can do what makes sense in my private cloud and my private cloud. So there's, a, a d there's an abstraction layer above the, above the cloud and that's where uh, technology that, uh, that Paul Moritz and Pivotal has gets, gets interesting in terms of managing that environment as well as uh, something we're bringing to the table called Accenture Cloud Platform, which is our management and orchestration uh, layer above, above the cloud to help uh, clients manage and orchestrate. And, uh, the is that where you guys get vers Is that where your versatility comes from? Is yeah. that where you guys are looking at saying, "Hey, I'll create an orchestration layer so that if someone in oil and gas wants to do something innovative, they can program away, and if someone over here in telematics wants to do something, you know what I'm saying?" So it's like, well, it, it, it needs to be at that at that cloud level. You need some of that uh, some of that interoperability, and even for one client at one point in time, they're going to have multiple. You know, for one application, they're likely going to have some things out in a public cloud, some in a private cloud, some behind a <laughs> traditional firewall. So it's, it's managing a hybrid environment for one process in real time. Uh, that's the kind of problem we're focused on, the architecture for that. Then, you know, I think when you get to the other layers, to your question on skills and tools and such, the data integration layer is a very important layer. And one thing we're, we're looking at with the platform and the way we assemble it is how we bring in uh, machine to machine communication and the, the right integration platforms to ingest and standardize the data in the right way. So one of the things we're working with as part of, uh, or we're bringing in and working with on this partnership is our Accenture uh, Mobility Managed Services platform, which manages machine to machine and data, data ingestion across a variety of platforms. So that, that gets into a standard data pl uh, environment and there's a, s a certain standardization across different technologies that you need there to help developers. And then the, the other layer uh, where a number of um, technologies come together is a common analytics platform. So you can use the multiple data sources that have come together and come up with analytical models that span across the different technologies and different source data that you've got and allow uh, data scientists to learn from others' models and advance them and you know, deliver better outcomes for companies based on the evolution of better analytic models. And so that, that's the highest level of tooling and, and standardization, obviously, is that ability to create those models. And that's a, a vision that, you know, that Pivotal's embarking on with their data fabric and the way that they're creating their vision, which is one of the things that's, that's interesting about the partnership and how it comes I together. Is it reasonable to expect that those standards will emerge across industries, or will we have like PACs, you know, industry-specific stand data standards that emerge? Uh, I think, I think it's, there's, there's some standards that will evolve based on 
based on certain domains and certain industries, and there's some some out there already. Uh, I think there's going to be a lot of uh, problems that need to be solved on an industry basis. So um, mm. the way you're going to get uh, patient care data to, you know, for a collaborative care in a healthcare environment is going to be very different than the way that you're going to get uh, drilling data or, or mining data you know, from, from those other industries. So I think there'll, there'll need to be multiple models in terms of how to, how to pull together, which is why uh, that data platform is very important because it need, you need to be, it needs to be very modular and pluggable so you can plug in new data sources from, you know, as you have different needs and different industries. So when you say data supporting. platform, you're talking about like a pivotal data platform, or you're talking about something that you actually develop for, for well, clients, I think it's like a, combination, a, yeah, I like think a it's data architecture. I think it's right? more of a, it's a data architecture. Yeah. I think there's yeah. tools and archi uh, architectures like Pivotal that are very important in that, but I think it's a little, there's, there's other capabilities that you need then as you look at how do you, what's the meta model look like in terms of the different source data you need? How do you integrate that in the right way and pull it together? So I think there's some other, you know, master data and other uh, metadata. So the source data, the, the, t the type of data, the, the metadata that you need to capture the outcome that you're trying to achieve. That's really where you guys shine. Right? Uh, yeah, and the other area that I think is important. Yeah, that's that's right. And the other area that that I'd add to that is the API layer of how you connect things together, which is uh, an area where there's a lot of great innovation happening around the industry now in terms of different API and APIs as service models. And I think that API layer is going to be very important in this, so that you can have a standardized, common way of plugging things together. Uh, at multiple levels in the stack, rather than every time you have to solve a problem, you know, doing a one-off, you know, point-to-point uh, -point integration. And, the and when you say that, Paul, you're talking about the API that that a, for example, a Pivotal or some other OpenStack publishes, correct? Or are you talking about? ones that you actually I think you know, there's promulgate. You get multiple layers of APIs. <laughs> there's the APIs going down into the stack and then there's a APIs across application platforms. How do you connect your your uh, machine to machine data coming from a, a from a smart machine back to your SAP data if that's what you need to do as one example. So the APIs across that layer of application technology will a be very important. And that too. latter example is one that Accenture would actually develop or not necessarily? Yeah, we, we'd, uh, we would develop uh, the kind of the end to end view of that working mm -hmm. with the, the uh, some of the other partners and working with the you know the, the, the industry that's being created around these API <laughs> platforms. <laughs> the API could connect the APIs. It's, <laughs> it's <laughs> sounds complicated. Um, uh, is it? <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, you're connecting a lot of pieces together. So mm. I think the uh, there's there's no equivalent. You know, I think one th if you look back at prior generations of technology in the enterprise, with a back office, you had a wall-to-wall -wall ERP, which simplified the environment for right. a lot of companies, and they moved toward that. Th there's not that equivalent really out there. Mm. Uh, in this area because it's, it's more complex, there's more components, you have uh, phys physical devices, it's not just a, a server and a data center. Yeah, you guys love complexity. <laughs> well, uh, we love, we, we love <laughs> making- thrive in complexity. We love, we love making things simple for our clients. <laughs> what our business is about is how do we yeah. make, you know, create a s an outcome for a client that's simple yeah. for them to right. achieve. Well, I mean, that, and that's, you know, you guys have, have, have a track record of doing that, mm -hmm. and that's one of the questions we were asking Ed earlier, and Dave and I were talking on our intro was, um, managing complexity, you're talking about event processing, complex yeah. events, you're talking about network management, and these are things that were kicked around during the early wireless days, and if you go further back in history, in client-server, network management, LAN, inter interoperability, internetworking, uh, TCP IP, and moving packets around, so in a way, that, that world was kind of stream-based event yeah. processing. So given that, what do you point to here, this industrial era that we're in, that they're talking here in San Francisco, the industrial cloud is really a new era, it's a really a, uh, a new thing that's happening but what can you point to from the previous generations of IT that you've been involved in or technology saying, it's a little bit of network management mixed in with wireless packet management or <laughs> you know, orchestration software, that's a middleware. I mean, you've got a kind of a cobble together kind of paradigm here, right? It's a little bit of software engineering, you've got infrastructure. What does it look like and what can you point to saying, we've seen this before? Yeah, I'd point to, in the seen it before category, we've thought about that and I'd point to, Client server technology back in about 1991 when we were having lots of debates. Is it going to be LU62 or TCP IP? And is, is it Ethernet or Token Ring? Is it going to be Sybase or Informix? Is it going to be Fat Client or Thin Client? Uh, and that's that feels like where we are with the technology right now. And eventually, some choices became clear in terms yeah. of how you architected. Some different models became mm -hmm. clear, and then technology standardized around that. You had packages that standardized yeah. and solutions that standardized throughout the stack. It, throughout yeah. the stack. Mm -hmm. And I think we'll, I think you know, what GE is trying to drive here with the ecosystem is, is accelerate that from the point of you know 1991 and client server to fast forward a little bit, so we have the ability to do more standardized solutions. So I think it is, as you said, it's it's a it's a lot of complexity right now. It's probably too. You know, it's it's a lot more complex. I think that it'll be several years from yeah. now some of the standards sort out, we get some of the base platforms in place. 
And uh, that's what I. W that's why I think yeah. it's an interesting area. I think it's got a lot of expansion. And it's un uncertain too. You're saying. And it's uncertain. Yeah, yeah. Dave. Dave always talks about this, and, and you know we always harp on it. In that the practitioners make more money than the actual people supplying the technology. I mean, we've seen that movie before in client server. The you know for every dollar of SAP or Oracle, you'd see you know an X multiple uh, distribution mm. or di yeah. delivery mm -hmm. ERP. So right. If you yeah, could have yeah, figured yeah. out who was going to apply ERP, yeah. you could have made a lot of money. So with yeah. so <laughs> kind of with that context, we were building the foundation for the industrial internet and industrial. Uh, of things in the cloud, you guys are on the front lines. I mean, you're building your own <laughs> software. Uh, you're integrating, you're becoming a software provider because by default, that's the delivery requirement to simplify. So what's that going to look like, the delivery? Who's the user? Who are, who's deploying? What's, gonna, what's yeah. the economics look like? Can you share any insight in there? Well, I think what, the, what we, uh, what we want to do for our clients, again, is we want to you know, simplify the business outcome for them. How do we get them to their business, you know, moment of business value quicker? And as you think about what cloud is, is I think training, you know, the market to do is, is buy based on outcomes and to buy more as a service. So I think the way this looks at the end of the day is more clients buying the outcome. I think Bill, you know, Bill Root talked about that in terms of how he sees the business model evolving. Clients will want more effective, op more effective airline operations, intelligent airline operations. They'll buy outcomes around that. That's where we see it going as well. We talk a lot about everything as a service and clients increasingly buying uh, an outcome based uh, capability as a service. So for us, we need to package the technology efficiently and package the solution efficiently so we can deliver it to our client on that basis. So I think that's that's the world we're moving into, I think. And I think it's a good world from our perspective and from the, the customer's perspective because they get the outcomes they want. And from our perspective, we can solve a problem for them over a longer time horizon. It's not just about implementing technology, it's about helping them achieve the And, and, the, big the, and the big data piece is critical because you can actually now measure the outcome and saying, did I achieve it? Yeah, so you can, right. it's like performance-based solutions. Transparency you know? and accountability, you can see, yeah. Yeah, you can see yeah. what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, thanks for coming on the Cube. We really appreciate it. Paul Darty, the uh, CTO of Accenture. Thanks for coming on. Great presentation. You guys are probably one of the most uh, effective panels I've seen. I mean, I love the the mojo of the industrial internet, industrial cloud. It's got that futuristic. There's some tech involved that's evolving and dynamic. But also, you guys are talking about business operations and business value, and that's a conversation we we want to hear more of. So, thank you for coming on the Cube. We thank really you. appreciate it. We'll be right back with our next guest after the short break. This is the Cube Silicon Angle's flagship program. We go out the events, extract the signals. I'm John Furrier of Silicon Angle with Dave Vellante. Bookie Bond out. I'll be right back. <laughs>